Right, it's time to play uh, Canada's fastest growing game. It is called Smoke, Fire, or Shut Your Pie. I give <laughs> Kipper some rumors. He tells us yes. whether or not there is anything to him. As I mentioned, it used to be called Smoke or Fire. Now it's called Smoke, Fire, yes. Shut Your Pie Hole. Pretty simple. Smoke means, eh, not much there. Fire means legit. Yeah. And Shut Your Pie Hole, wow, well, that's... Yeah. Pretty much speaks for itself. <laughs> Kip, are you ready to play? I'm ready. Jesse, you ready to play? I'm in. And I hope Canada's ready to play. Let's start with the Sens. And DJ Smith, the struggles, as we mentioned, yeah. uh, five straight losses that combined with new ownership set to take hold soon raises questions about the head coach's future behind the bench. Smoke, fire, shut your pie hole. DJ Smith is on the hot seat. Yeah, I, I would say that there's uh, there's smoke here for sure. And like you, you just mentioned, it, you, we're going to have a, an announcement, whether it's uh, next week, two weeks, a month from now, there's going to be a new, new ownership group. And th they're going to want to do much more than just a, a fresh paint of, uh, uh, fresh you know, of paint, yeah. fresh coat of paint uh, in, in the building. They're going to want to come in and, and and let people know that there's uh, a new management team that uh, wants to have their own thoughts, philosophies, and and who's running the show. So does that mean that you know Pierre Pierre Dorian's gone and DJ Smith's gone? Not necessarily. They may want to come in and just maybe get to know uh, a few people here before they make any rash uh, decisions. But um, most likely, we're going to see one, if not two, changes. I I, I don't believe that even under new management or new ownership, that both these guys can survive as early as September. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, the World Baseball Classic has been a hot topic on this show. Uh, it's been a pretty big success this year. We had Connor McDavid on the show yeah. saying that everyone's dropped the ball that we haven't seen best on best since 2016. I added to it by saying the fact that Crosby and McDavid and McKinnon having played on a line together yeah. is an absolute calamity for the game of hockey. Smoke, fire, or shut your pie hole, a best on best hockey tournament is coming soon. Oh, it, it's fire for sure. It's just that they can't get their act together and they can't have anything with consistency and, you know, should be at least one every three or four years, right? I mean, the same thing with the Olympics. I don't think you can do it uh, every year. Um, but certainly the players want it, the fans want it, and they're going to have to recruit, recoup some of this money here from the pandemic. And much like the baseball uh, with uh, MLB here, you, you put your tournament on. I don't know whether or not the, the fans would truly love it as much as the Olympics. Right. And we know what that means to Connor McDavid. Um, but it's a, it's an easy cash grab for, for these leagues now, and I think the players are on board, especially... Every two years. How hard is it? Do a World done. Cup, yeah. do the Olympics. They, and they, if you skip the Olympics, you won't at least yeah. crush yourself if you don't want to go yeah. all the way across and play in the middle of the night. Since the early 2000s, it's been a disaster, and we had our league, the NHL, well, I'll take ownership on it yeah. in this instance, we were ahead of every other league when it came to international play, mm -hmm. and we completely dropped the ball here. Yeah, dropped it, fumbled it, tripped trying to pick it up, and the other team went the other way. Like, th this is a joke. Yeah. Jesse, I know you want to jump Well, no, it's just it's not even like the, the last World Cup of hockey was bad. It was amazing, and they just they just stopped. Like, that's the frustrating thing. It's not like it was bad. Yeah, Didn't well, the it was. And then had some extenuating circumstances Listen, around an Olympics. Yeah. But the only thing that was kind of bad, though, was, you know, this North American team. Yeah, they got rid of that. Uh, team time, Europe. Though. And come on, world, world means world. Put yeah. clubs together, and if they suck, so be it. They got to come from countries. Couldn't agree more. All right, um, listen, I was talking about Connor Bedard's numbers yeah. over the last little while. He scored his 70th in his 55th game yeah. of the season, up to 142 points over the weekend. I was trying to put some context to this, and I was really struggling, Kipper. So, smoke, fire, or shut your pie yeah. hole. Bedard is the best junior player you've ever seen. I would tend to shut the pie hole on this oh, one. Yeah, <laughs> no, nobody, nobody can sit there definitively from certain eras and say, hey, Bedard's way better than Mario was in Laval. Right. Or Bob or, or not. Crosby yeah. and yeah. Ramuski. Or McDavid in, in Erie. Come right. on, like Lindros in Oshawa. We we're talking about different eras, and they're all special players. They're all great players. Bedard is certainly lending to. Okay, to look at this. Look at this draft year comparison here, right? Like, 
It's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's, 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 incre <laughs> it's, it's incredibly uh, uh, impressive, but we are still talking about Connor McDavid, who's just tearing it up right, right now. Let the kid come in next year and just see where he is after a year yeah. before you go back and, and anoint him uh, the best that's ever come out I just said best junior. junior. Like, listen, I know a guy who scored 60 What does best junior. mean to you? <laughs> best scorer? Just is, that's, you're giving me stats. I appreciate the stats. Okay. If you're telling me he's a better scorer at that same age than, than other players, I'll, I'll give you that. Best player? Now we're in a different conversation. Fine. I got one more that I think you might get fired up on. Yeah. Um, listen, we were talking about this all week, but the QMJHL yeah. that already had a low number of fights in their league is suggesting that they will flat out ban fighting. There has been a ton of debate around this on our show in the hockey community. Uh, the Q spokesperson is suggesting that this is coming, though they haven't agreed upon what it will actually be. You already get five and ten for a fight in the queue and there is a suggestion that it might go to tossed from the game and a one game suspension smoke fire or shut your pie hole banning fighting is good for junior hockey yeah this one is not a shut your pie hole this is pucker it up <laughs> okay mm -hmm. i don't i don't understand that all right okay yeah. no yeah. Pucker. Yeah. Uh, then, like, nothing can squeak through there. Just shut it. Completely. Like, well, it's further okay, along so the, the scale. Yes, it's much higher it. oh, than it, shut it. it. Okay, Pucker so is like why. nothing gets through. Tell me why. Because it's a non-issue here. They've sanitized it so much. They don't even want to give it credit. Like let's give the let's let's give some people some credit because it's been a natural evolution of, of fighting de-escalating in our league. Right. But nobody wants to mention that. They're bringing up this topic like it's a huge problem. Mm. We've sanitized our game from the junior level to the NHL more so than we've ever seen before. Why is this even a hot button topic? Well, where did it come from? It's not like all I of a sudden we're seeing a government. ton of people uh, fighting. I can tell you. Well, yeah, the government. The government. Yeah, yeah of course. But Isabel Charette. Yeah. A former Olympic sure. speed skater and sure. Enrico Ciccone, yeah. who did it for a living in the National Hockey yeah. League and suggests, Kipper, okay. and I'm going to throw it out there, that, that 17, 18-year-old kids don't need to suffer brain damage yeah. for other people's enjoyment. I get all of that, but it, it's no one's fighting anyways, really. Yeah. And we have rules that uh, penalize people for doing it much more than, what, two times, three times? Right. Like, it's... It's, it's looking after itself here. We're talking about governments getting involved. Can you show us you can run a country first <laughs> before you want to tell us about everything we need to know about our game? How about being good at what you're doing first and foremost before you stick your fingers in everybody else's pie hole? Pie hole. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the break. There's so many counters I'd love to walk through, but that, my friends, is how you close a segment. Time for one last break. We'll get to game time and wrap things up ahead of uh, Hockey Central. Let's get for sticks around for game time. Hey, you're not wrong, my friend. You are not wrong.